In this video clip, I'm going to try and show you how you use the method of interpolation to find an estimate for the median of grouped data. Um, it's worthwhile starting from where you probably left off on this topic. At GCSE, you didn't use interpolation, but you did have a method for finding an estimate for the median. I've got the cumulative frequency curve here, and this is what you would have used at GCSE to try and find an estimate for the median. You'd have looked at it and thought, right, I've got 80 bits of data. The median splits the data in half, so I'll just think, right, half of 80 is 40. I go across from 40 and down and come up with a value of, you know, just slightly bigger than 8, according to this graph. As we progress through maths, we probably often think about, can we improve on the methods that we've previously had? And that sort of level of accuracy isn't particularly good. What I've done is I've zoomed in on the graph, and again, we can go through that process and say, right, there we go, across from 40 and down, and now, okay, I'm a bit more precise, maybe it's 8.7 or something. It's slightly smaller than 9, but even still, that doesn't feel precise enough for the sorts of skills that I should have. Right, so the purpose of interpolation is to try and improve on that level of accuracy, and we use a calculation to find an estimate for the median. What it's based on, and you can see I've stripped away some of the uh, bits of the table and just kept the bits that are important here. We were looking for something to do with the 40th item. So you can see that the 40th item would be appear in this particular group here. Uh, and I've zoomed in on that part of the graph as well. You should be able to see that this group here, it would start with, uh, the print before it there would be 35 values, and by the time I've looked through this whole group, I get to 56. So there we go, it's at 35, and it increases all the way up to 56. And I suppose my question is, how far through this group is the median value going to be? And so I know the median is the 40th item, and you should be able to see that if I go across at 40, it's not that far up, that group. Now I've added some of the actual data values as well, so just let me point those out. When I was at the 35th item of data, I would have had a, a value of 8, and you can see the colours there matching up. And when I got as far as the 56th item, the data value for that would have been 12. What I'm really trying to figure out then is, by the 40th item, what would be an appropriate data value for that one? And I've labelled it M for median. And that's what the interpolation method is going to hopefully help us find out. Interpolation uses similarity to basically calculate the estimate for the median. What we do is we look at the comparison of distances. So if I just hold my pen on there, that's roughly where I think the median would meet the, the cumulative frequency curve, just to remember that. What we do is we compare the change in height, so the distance between this 35 and 40, where the median value would live, and we compare that to the whole height of that particular group. And also we can have a comparison here of the width change, so again if I put that's where the median is, what's the, the comparison between that distance there and the whole width of the group? And what I've got here is a mathematical statement that describes that. I've used these colours just to help you see where they've come from. So, you know, you can see that the lower boundaries and upper boundaries of these group values. Uh, what this m minus 8 is doing is comparing that distance there across, and the 12 minus 8 is the full distance across. The 40 minus 35 is just that change in height, again, up to the median value there, and the 56 minus 35 is a comparison there of the whole of that height change. If I evaluate these, you can see it simplifies down quite nicely in this case, and it should be possible for you to see how exactly I would work out the median now. So it's an estimate all the same, but it's a really good one. Um, what I would do now, I hope you'd see, is I'd times everything by 4, and then I'd add 8, and that would get me a value of 8.95, and I've just rounded that to two decimal places, but if you wanted more, I suppose you could keep more. But that's the idea of interpolation. It uses the comparison of distances to give us a much better value for the median. I've got a second example here, um, and you can see this is a slightly different type of data. This is actually discrete data, 
um, but it's been grouped, so we still have to treat it as continuous. Because I'm going to try and find a median value, I've just worked out the cumulative frequency here, and I'll pop that next to it. That should be helpful to us. And our sort of little GCSE reminder, here's a cumulative frequency curve, it's called an Ogive curve with that shape. And again at GCSE you think, right, well it's half a 65, go across and look down, and that would give us a clue as to what it would be. Now that we're at AS and we're doing S1, we should be able to get a better estimate of the median than uh, just drawing a line and going across there and down. My justification for zooming into this part of the graph is because of my thoughts about where the median will be. So I've done 65 divided by 2 and that got me 32.5 and so I should be able to figure out using my cumulative frequency where exactly that group that median value would lie, which group is it in. And the median value would be in this group here, because up to there I've only looked at 30 items, and by the time I get to the end of that group, I'd look at 58. So the 32nd point fifth value, if it ever existed, would be in there. One thing I really want to point out as well, and I'm not sure if you can pick it up on this graph, is this discrete data. The, the points are plotted just slightly off the lines, uh, and that's because we've had to adjust these class boundaries to make the thing be treated as continuous. We don't really want to be drawing the cumulative frequency graph all the time, so I've got rid of that, moved it out of the way, and just kept the key information. So I've got the classes, and I've got the cumulative frequency. And remember, I decided that the key group for me was this one from 351 to 400. But remember, we need to adjust the class boundaries. I also shared with you before that I knew the median would be at 32.5 out of my 65 values. Right, I fill lots of this in now, so I'll perhaps better recap so you can see where this has all come from. Uh, I'll try and use a bit of colour as well to show you. So where did that 30 come from? Okay, so I've got the 30 because that's as, as many items are, as are included in all the previous groups. And the 58 is from the one. By the time I look at the end of the class that I'm interested in, I will have looked at 58 items. Just again to look at these, 350.5, 400.5, and the justification for that is it's discrete data, but we do have to treat it as continuous because it's grouped, so I've had to adjust those class boundaries. It's also just easier to calculate if you keep M on the top, so M for median that is, so I've just arranged it so that on my diagram M is also on the top. So again it's a comparison of this length, which is M take away 350.5, compared to the whole length, which is there, and on the right hand side I'm comparing this length from 30 to 32.5 with the whole of the length there. Okay, I've just worked it out a little bit and done some of the calculation and again it should be possible to see just how easily we can figure out that M is 355 pounds, that's the nearest whole pound, but I actually get a whole load more decimal places than that. That's the premise of interpolation, that's how it works. It's comparing distances, but it's a really good way, without having to draw the cumulative frequency, of figuring out how far through a group the median actually would be. So thanks for listening to this. Uh, I hope that gives you confidence to try and have a go at some questions. Um, please do get in touch if you uh, have any feedback.